say can and will be used against you. There you go. Just have a little box. This meeting is being recorded. So um, we are. I'm very, very grateful to Chris Brown. Um, you guys, most of you guys know him or know of him from North Coast Church in Vista. Um, we're still hoping to have our, our district conference there. I think we have to make a call on that pretty soon, but it's all the way out in like June 18th, 19th, something like that. So we're still kind of holding that out, holding out hope that we can be together in person. But as you know, North Coast is really one of the leading churches in America, not just in our denomination, but you guys, Chris, you guys have done a ton with leadership development, with uh, sticky teams and all the conferences and everything you guys have hosted. And just in terms of where you're at as a church, I was really curious to see, to find out and learn from you what, what you guys are learning. But I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you the real reason why I invited Chris. So this, about three weeks ago, when this whole thing was just starting to blow up in our face, I was at Disneyland with my family. And I'm literally, we're in line for a ride. And I'm going, I'm, all the stuff's coming through on my phone. I go, man, I don't know. So I did what any good district superintendent should do. I just started reaching out to, to different pastors. And so I reached out to Chris by text and I said, Hey man, I'm, I'm praying for you. And like, I was feeling bad in my heart. I go, man, it's gotta be canceling your church services. And man, Chris has got to be feeling like, like really stressed out. And he gets right back to me. And, and I quote, he just, I said, Chris, I'm praying for you. He gets right back and he just says, we love the challenge and creative energy that flows from situations like this. Yeehaw with like eight W's. It was awesome. I was like, that's the thinking that, that um, I want to be around. That's the approach that I want to take is like, you know what, let's just, let's go after this thing. And so Chris, I guess my first question to you, man, is like, how are you guys doing? How's your family? You guys staying healthy and what's going on? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. This is an honor. And to see so many faces and names that I know and to be part of this tribe with the EFCA is just incredible. So uh, this is a joy. This is really fun for me. Um, things here are going really well. You know, California is definitely in the thick of it. Um, we've had our shelter in place for some weeks now. Uh, having a 18-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 14-year-old at home uh, brings a whole new set of challenges. Um, we've now got it into their head why they're not going out with just a group of friends, why they're not hanging out with just their little clique, and, uh, and they've pretty much bought into that. But now uh, I still have a place to go. Uh, I'm still coming to work uh, every day and at least putting in hours. We have a skeleton crew here of IT, of HR, and of finance that's still doing some work. Um, here's a cool, uh, uh, man, I don't even know where we're going with this conversation. Uh, but uh, when we finally had the shelter in place and only essential workers should be out, uh, I got an email from our mayor saying, Chris, can you please tell your church and staff that you are essential to our community and you are essential to keep working at this time. Um, what you do for the spiritual health of our people gives us better mental health, which will give us better physical health. Please uh, let North Coast keep being North Coast at a time like this. So I just thought, man, what an honor to have a mayor reach out to us and say, hey, they're telling everyone to stay home, but whatever crew you have to keep being North Coast for our community, keep being North Coast. That was so cool. No, so, I, yeah, like you said, some new challenges, bring some new creativity. But when you work with an amazing team, uh, you just have a lot of fun doing it. No, that's fantastic. And, and that's the, what we're hoping to see, too, out of all this is in the, the, uh, the negative of all the impact we've had. But it's increasing our amount of connection. So just even kind of like stepping right up into it or get, hopping into this, obviously, um, so much of church has revolved around the, the, the weekend experience. And, and now that's been dramatically altered. What have you guys done to, to um, continue to stay connected and how, how is that going and how are you seeing, how are you even measuring that or getting the pulse on, on where your people are at? Um, and this is where, you know, Tim, not exactly knowing where you want to go with this, we may be a little contrarian. And so some of you may give this two minutes and go, that's all I need to hear. I'm done. Because um, uh, we are doing as little as possible and it is going great. And I think we want to keep both those things in check right now. Um, I see a rush of my peers right now to try to create the absolute best online experience. And they're really trying to be online content creators. And uh, early on on this, in fact, day two of this, our team got together and just realized we don't want to make the best Christian online content there is. We're not set up for it. We don't have the resources. And 
and guys, not trying to be arrogant, but we can probably out-resource most churches in America. Um, and even then we realize that's not our calling uh, to try to come up with the best online worship, the best online teaching, to try to have the best online children's or online youth. You can Google right now, go to YouTube and just go Christian worship. And you're going to find hundreds and thousands of pages of people that produce this just for online. Why are we trying to do it when we don't have it? I mean, look at how much you can Google with speaking and church and uh, how much you can get from YouTube and Vimeo on these things. And so we really quickly said, let's bring our people what no one else can. And that's let's bring them North Coast. No one else can do us. No one else can do uh, Christopher and Chris and Larry, our teaching team. No one else can do our youth pastors. No one else can do our children's stuff. Um, and that's not because it's light years. It's because it's our people. And our people want to be connected to our people. And so we actually raised the bar and said, let's not kill us and our video team, our creative team, our sound and our video editors. Let's just shoot North Coast and bring them North Coast. And anything else they want, they can find it better online. And uh, because of that, we're doing a lot less work than I think most people. And we're spending more of that time into families, into home, into relationship during this forced sabbatical that now all Christian workers have. And I think on both sides, it's working really, really well for us. I don't know if that opens the door to questions or you want to mute me from here on out and go with someone that has better answers. Well, no, I, you said it's contrarian. And, and I think for a lot of guys listening, that might be somewhat of a breath of fresh air because we are all scrambling and we don't necessarily, I, I think most of us do feel like we don't have the resources that we wish we did or whatever else. So to hear you say that, um, from where you guys are at and the, your online capabilities and say, you know, our focus is on connection um, and no one else can do, no one else can do you, meaning no one else can be what you guys are to the people that you have. Yeah. So, um, and, that's, and that's working really well for you guys. And, and don't get me wrong. I immediately go to my first one of my, in the first week into this, I thought, let's do seven at seven. Every, seven, every day, seven days a week at seven o'clock at night, let's have a cool online program. Our people, there's going to be dinner time. They're going to be bored to death. Um, some of, now, on the other hand, we have some of our healthcare workers, some of our uh, first uh, responders. We've got people that are working harder than they've ever worked before. So when we talk to our congregation, we've got to keep both. If we talk like everyone's just sitting at home, we've got a huge segment of our, our congregation right now that goes, sitting at home, we're pulling double shifts right now. And so there, there's a both and, but um, my first thing was, let's do seven at seven, seven days a week at 7 p.m. We're going to have Chris and Amy on marriage. We're going to have Chris and Amy on parenting. We're going to have the best of JD and Trent and Jay. We're going to have the best of Chris Hilkin. We're going to have the best of our leaders on finance, on relationship, on family game night. And we can produce seven days a week, seven o'clock. We're going to, North Coast TV is going to come to you. And I just thought, why are we doing this? There's better stuff out there. We're going to kill our team for something we're not great at. Um, the, uh, the way that this church is built has never been about doing an online production company. So why do we think we're going to become a great one in two months? Let's relax. Um, let's get children and youth ministry to our children and youth from our stuff. Let's put an online service on. Now, now guys, listen, we're not trying to be disingenuous. We tell our people, if you want to join us at 530 on Saturday, 9, 11, and 6 on Sunday, our service is running. But that service was shot and filmed on Thursday. It plays all weekend long. You can click on it anytime you want. And, and Tim, here's another one for us. We go live. You know, our Saturday night service goes live to seven locations. We do 62 services a weekend when our doors are open. So we're really good at mass producing services and getting them to many locations. And even then, we pulled the plug and said, why are we trying to shoot a service live? I mean, Murphy lives in the live feed. Why are we doing this? Let's take our time. Let's shoot worship separately. Let's film teaching in an empty room, talking right to the camera. Let's just talk to North Coasters. Let's put it up. And the first weekend, people clicked on their service times at 9 o'clock or 11 or 6. By the second and third weekend, 80% um, of our people no longer click on when we offer the service. This idea of we want to feel like we're still together. We're all still meeting together at 6. Quickly turned into, oh, I can watch this at noon on Sunday. Uh, oh, I can watch this Saturday at three um, and quickly turned into, I still feel together in a part of North Coast, but I can do it around my schedule, my family time. And we don't have anybody here that, and during the weekends trying to pull off a live service to empty rooms. So 
again, a, a little different than what a lot of churches are doing. There's pros and cons on both sides. I just felt like let's not become North Coast TV. Let's not try to pull off five services live to make you feel like you're still a part of something. When by nature of being a, a video venue church, people have always watched apart from us and felt a part of us. Mm. Um, let's just keep that going. Yeah. So I, I think that's, that's encouraging for, cause a lot of us, it's like, if you weren't doing live stream before, because you didn't have the technology, you didn't have the people, you didn't even, it wasn't part of your scope. And all of a sudden there's this rush and everyone's throwing out, Oh, you can, you can use this streaming service and that streaming service. And you got to get spun up like that. Or you feel like you're dead. You guys didn't take that track. You're saying, no, we're just, we're okay with recording it in advance. We're okay with, because they're going to watch it when they want to watch it. Yeah, it happened. Has it been three weeks now? I mean, it's, it's now we're kind of in a time warp in this thing. I forget what day is what day, but uh, when the NBA decided we're not going to play games, they canceled the games with an audience with a crowd in there. Um, March Madness got canceled. The big tennis match out here in the Indian Wells in Palm Springs, the international tennis um, tournament got canceled. That Wednesday is when we realized, oh, this is much bigger. When, when you take away March Madness, and when NBA owners say we're not going to play, when billionaires decide to lose playoff money, we realized this is bigger than we thought. And that next day, we changed our schedule. Um, I, we set up six meetings. We had a meeting at 9, at 10, at uh, 11, at 12, at 1, at 2, and at 3. Just meeting with teams saying this is going to last longer than we thought. This is bigger than we thought. Um, my first thing is let's do this better than everybody. Let's do seven at seven. Let's do programming. Let's turn our video team and our audio team into a production company. We can lead the world. And by the third, fourth meeting, I'm like, what the heck are we doing? And hearing from our team, just they were amped. They wanted to be like, we can get this. We can do this. But within a matter of three or four meetings, I realized what it was going to cost the team to pull this off. And that's when we flipped and said, let's just do North Coast. Just give them North Coast. No bells and whistles and uh, leave everything else to what's already out there. When you shoot it ahead of time, it can go on Vimeo, it can go on YouTube, it can go on Facebook. Um, you can put it everywhere so your people don't have to lock in to just those that are online or those that have great Wi-Fi or just put it anywhere. Click on it whenever you want to watch it. And uh, three weeks into it, we're getting a little better at some stuff we're learning, but we still have kept that bar low and we kept our people more at home than in the office. Right. So even given all that, and I, I think that's, that's fantastic um, counsel and encouragement for, for a lot of us. At the same time, though, we have a pretty big Sunday coming up and people are going, wow, this is the first time in American history when, you know, the church is not going to be gathered together on Easter Sunday. And, and what does this mean? So for North Coast, as you look at Easter, how, what are you thinking for Easter? And like, and, and again, we're all at different levels of resource and, and scope and everything else. So have you guys come up with any kind of thoughts about how you might do it differently to set, to set it apart from a typical service? Or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, we talked about, hey, giving them recipes for making their own unleavened bread. A family is going to do that week so we can share communion out of stuff that they've made. We've done this drive-in. Every campus has huge parking lots. We're going to do this drive-in theater type thing where all the cars come and we set up these big screens and you can watch it from different angles. And we're going to do this. And we've canceled every single one of those ideas. And we kind of came back to, why don't we do the same thing we've been doing for the last three weeks, but say happy Easter in the middle of it. And we got a standing ovation from all of our staff and said, yep, why don't we do that? And uh, that's what we're doing for Easter. I'm dead serious. Our songs that day may mean a little Eastery. Our worship guy may say something about Easter. My bet is we'll find a cool three minute video um, from Worship House Media or from something out there to plug in. My message is gonna be, we're going through the book of Acts right now. Um, wherever we end up on in the next two weeks, we'll hit those verses. My bet it, it has something to do with Jesus and that's good around Easter. And, uh, and we're just gonna do the same thing and say happy Easter. Um, and again, you want to knock yourself out, knock yourself out. I mean, the bells and whistles that are being thrown right now at producing online content, I'm not against it. I watch it. I mean, I'm watching other guys stuff and going, man, that's incredible. I just know what it takes to pull it off right now in this time of uncertainty. And we just said, you know what? We can put together the absolute best 50 minute Easter video 
And I guarantee you, if you Google Easter videos, there's 3,000 out there that kill what we would do. So why are we trying to do that? That's not who we are. Um, so again, we're lowering the bar. We're keeping it, hey, um, two of our worship songs, uh, we're going to continue our book of Acts. We're going to talk about it with a little bit of an Easter flair, but we may put some lilies in the corner of the shot so you feel good about it and uh, hope you hit eggs with your family. Um, yeah. Easter is great as a holiday. Easter should affect how we do every day, not how we do a holiday. So we're kind of in that zone of just letting it ride. Well, and I wonder if part of that too, you know, you're talking about your staff and you got a standing ovation. I mean, our, our, our church staffs, they're all, we're, see, that's the crazy thing about this. And we had a, our webinar last week was with Mark Lewis from EFCA Crisis Response. And he said, one of the difference, differences about this particular crisis is it's not localized. It hits everybody. And so your, your staff is, is dealing with, am I going to get sick or dealing with their parents or relatives that may have it or dealing with school closures and having their kids at home. So to turn it around on them and say, and to lean on them even heavier to produce something that's this world-class thing that you can say, wow, look what we did. You're just adding more on them at that point too. Well, and we got our worship band together. So let me tell you how lame we are. And uh, we're, we're fine with that. We got our worship band together. We set up a, a little kind of studio. We got a little coffee house. We cleaned out all the tables and chairs. We put our worship band in there. We put three cameras, uh, mic, and we had them do four sets of two songs. And we recorded all at once. So we have four weekends knocked out right there. Um, and uh, we got more blowback about the amount of people we had in one room filming it than we had about how awesome the worship was. We had more of our people going, what type of example are you setting? There was eight people in that room. What about social distancing? We had more concern about, oh my gosh, what are we doing to our worship team at this time? Getting them that close together. Um, then we did about people going, this is the most amazing worship you know, Christianity has ever seen. And I thought, yeah, and maybe yeah. that should at this time. So again, we're knocking stuff out in large chunks. Um, our teaching is week of, you know, we film it on Thursday. And, uh, and we just let this thing go. And so, uh, again, I'm not saying this is the right way. You want to know what North Coast is doing. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're doing. We're looking at what you said. This is a national, you know, uh, crisis and pandemic. Christian workers have a forced sabbatical. Like at no other time I've ever seen in my lifetime. Nor do I know if we'll ever have one again. Your kids are forced to spend more time with Christian workers, parents, than they ever have been before, and so is your spouse. That's where we're leaning at North Coast. Um, my staff videos once a week are just encouragement, but they are, you better be pouring into your marriage, your spiritual life, your skill sets, and your kids right now like never before. How many times do we cry about burnout and I wish we had better health, and now we have two months of forced health? And we're trying to get our staff to do more than ever before in areas that they're not good at. We, we never hired everyone to be an online production company. So let's force them to be at home and really invest. So I, yeah. I told them in, in basically in three areas. We use Mark 12 as one that teaches the law, heard Jesus debating, noticed that he had given everyone a good answer, ask him, Rabbi, of all the commandments, what's the most important? Uh, Hero Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandments greater than these. Two things we really come down to, loving God and loving others. Can we take a month and a half right now as a staff and force ourselves to just go, how am I loving God and loving those in my circle better than I ever have before? And can we come out of this when the doors open stronger than ever before as a team? And so I've told them, you find something spiritually that you always wanted to read, do, or take part of, and you get that, have Amazon deliver it to your house, jump into that book, and really do some soul care at this time. Find something online in your area of strengths and giftedness. If you're a teacher, find some teaching stuff online. If it's administration, if it's hospitality, if it's gifts of service, there's so many great online tools to help us in our area of giftedness. Find a little online class or series of TED Talks to help you in your gifted area. And then use 20, 30 hours a week to pour into your spouse and your kids with no guilt. Because yeah. all of us are wired to have guilt and go, I should be working. I should be doing something right now. I see J.D. Larson, one of our guys on here, who's just a killer campus pastor on our strategic leadership team. And J.D.'s a guy that's going to every day go, oh, well, what can I do in at Vista Campus? What can I do? And I'm like, 
just love your wife. You just lost your father-in-law this week. Love your wife for the next three weeks like you guys have never loved each other before. Love the family that you're going to be in contact with during this time like you never have before. Um, yeah. Two years from now, our, our church will never know the hours our people work during this time. But two years from now, our spouses and our kids should always talk about that forced sabbatical and wish it would happen more often. And, and I think that's the emphasis we want to push our people to on that side of the coin, not how can we produce what other people can produce better. Well, and I, again, I love that because it is different than, than what 90% of what is out there. I mean, there's just been this incredible rush to, to resource everybody. And I know I've, I've got sucked into all that. I mean, the new district superintendent and you know, we got to run, run, run. And every day it's just a mental, you know, you're blowing your brain out every day because you're like, what am I supposed to be doing now? Incidentally, real quick, everybody, if you want to ask questions, if you have a question for Chris, just go ahead and type it in the chat box. And, uh, you know, you can ask a question to yourself, Chris, um, but type it in the chat box and we'll try to get to as many of them as you can. So you don't need to wait for anything. Just go ahead and, and start getting them up there. Um, but that being said, though, I mean, what are, are you guys thinking about? Because like you said, we have, you have first responders, you have uh, healthcare professionals. They're getting stressed. They're getting stretched to the limit in their own life. I and mean, they're having you know, a hard time even when do I get food because I'm, I'm working all the time. But then the other community issues with schools. What are, have you guys done anything as a church uh, to, to kind of jump into the community? I know you mentioned the mayor reached out to you guys, but, but have you used this as an opportunity to, to get more inroads into, into the gospel, into gospel centered kind of ministry in your community? Yeah. You know, that's one that's probably been a little bit more of a wrestling match for us. How much do we want to go out and meet needs versus telling our people to stay at home and not go out? And that's been that little balance of, wow, where do you go out and mobilize the Christian army to be in the community when the community is asking the Christian army to stay at home like everybody else? And so really, um, Connor McFadden, who is our, our lead pastor over all of our community service stuff, he's incredible. The reason why the mayor and the reason why the school superintendent reaches out to North Coast instead of us reaching out to them is because of the history and the reputation of community service you know, that North Coast has. And uh, we've got 19 different organizations here in North County, North San Diego County, um, that do food and delivery and take care of people. And those are ones that our people give to and that our people serve at. So again, instead of us trying to recreate a wheel that already has an infrastructure, we just pushed our people to the services we're already connected with and say, continue to serve there, continue to give there. And if you haven't started that, here's places that are doing this that we're partnering with. So we looked at, oh my gosh, let's get a list of all of our seniors. And we had a list of, uh, I think it came to over 700 and some seniors uh, over the age of 65 or 70 um, that we wanted to keep a special eye on at this time um, from Paul Savona, an amazing job of leading that group. And Paul said, okay, here's the list of maybe our most at-risk people. And then immediately, what do we do? Do we just have North Coasters drive their cars in here with groceries? Do we fill their cars up? Do we send them? These people don't want people coming to their house either, maybe leave it on their doorstep. And that's when we realize we're trying to logistically create something that's going to be a nightmare. When our community already has these and the infrastructure, why don't we support these 19 resources that are feeding kids who are used to getting meals at school, that are feeding teenagers, that are feeding single parents, that are doing food banks, that are doing seniors. And so again, we just took our resources and put into what was happening Instead of us creating a B minus or C plus of what's already there, we just we're riding on the backs of what's already there. And because our people primarily make up the volunteers that do those organizations, now we're getting credit with our community organizations because we're not trying to do what they were meant to do. And, and we're going to leave it anyway. We're going to do it for two months. Then we're going to stop the program. And they're like, thanks. You could have promoted us. You could have got us more in light with the community because we're here year round, year round doing this food stuff. So again, if you go to our homepage, it has resources. If you want to give and help, here's some resources. If you need help, here's 19 resources we're involved with supporting either financially or manpower. Jump in and help there or get help from there instead of recreating the wheel. And that's how we tend to work because of who Connor is, our community service pastor. Uh, we work in and through our community relations. We don't try to create stuff that think we're better than our community. You know, yeah. really. 
Yeah, so again, the principle there is, is what's, what is the community already doing? Where do they need help? I know in our community, uh, we have a, a, a food bank and they're just getting overrun with people that they've never dealt with before because of the job loss and that sort of thing. So jump in with what they're already doing as opposed to, like you said, needing to create some, some other type of thing that you're only gonna dismantle when everything kinda, when everything kinda goes away. So um, back, to the, back to the online services though, because um, we, that's still something that we have to deal with. And I'm gonna, yeah, but I did wanna ask you this though, because you guys have done online stuff for a while. Do you have, what kind of um, advice or tips or whatever for guys that are kind of new at having the broadcast or, or even just get themselves on video, it's the only way they can, what kind of tips for camera stuff, just kind of basic stuff, it doesn't require investment and in all kinds of good equipment, but just kind of those, oh duh, like yeah, I should have thought of that. Um, things that, that you guys have learned over the years that you could pass along to us as guys are just kind of coming on with some, this sort of stuff. Oh, good stuff, yeah. I mean, first thing is don't try to be me. Um, I'm the only me that there is and I'm really good at being me and I can't be anybody else. And so don't try to be me. Uh, Brian Chan, be Brian Chan. I can't be Brian Chan. No one else can be Brian Chan. Dion Brooks, Dion's the only guy that can be Dion right now. So be Dion. Terry Lambert, Terry's Terry, and no one else can touch Terry. Mike Smith's got to be Mike Smith. Linda Bishop's got to be Linda Bishop. Jim Fisher's got to be Jim Fisher. And I think what's happened, what I've watched with some of my peers is this, because um, like you guys, I click and I watch a lot of people. Who's doing what? Who's doing what? And so many times I just, I'm, I'm watching like this. I'm like, oh, it's a train wreck. I want to turn it off, but I got to see how this thing ends. Um, and people are, they're trying to be Joel Osteen or they immediately put a camera and go this. And I'm like, be you, you can't be anybody else. And here's the beauty. No one else can be you. And if, if, if you pastor and lead a church, then your church is used to you. Just be you set up a camera and talk to your church. You don't need to get crazy. And, and I think the more fades and swipes and multiple cameras you have teaching, you're trying to become now something that's online. Stephen Furtick is Stephen Furtick. Um, there's no way I can touch being Stephen Furtick. Um, I look at these guys that have this amazing online stuff and presence and I go, I can't do that. I can't do that. What we found is we set up a camera and we just talked to the camera. Now, a lot of guys just trying to encourage them, never ever see a camera, always see your audience. Um, for a lot of us, we're used to teaching in a live room, and so we talk to people. When we get to talking to a device, it's a little bit difficult. Um, years ago, in, in larger structures and speaking, and because of the size of our church, I just got really comfortable in speaking to a camera, but I have never, ever seen a camera. I look into that lens, and right now, I see every living room at North Coast. I picture the family on the couch. I picture someone sitting in the lazy boy with a cup of coffee and they're just leaning in to see what their pastor wants to tell them at a time like this. They can click on the best speakers in America, but instead they've chosen me. So don't try to be anyone else. Just bring you to them. That's what your people need. One camera, one shot, do your little Bible study, do your message, share with the people right there sitting in your room right now and with your family or maybe at this time you're by yourself and that makes this even more difficult. Here's what I wanna tell you, North Coast, and here's what I wanna tell you about who God is at this time and God will never be canceled, he will never be delayed, he will never be sheltered at home and just talk to your people and that's what people want right now, they want their church. I got a buddy, Ken, um, from the East Coast and uh, he just said, Chris, I'm sending this to my people. What do you think? Oh, I hope Ken's not watching right now. I should scroll through the names. I don't care. I'm just going to talk about it. Um, God bless Ken. His stuff's never going to go viral. But here's what I know. His church eats it up. And when I see every little Bible study he sends to his people, he's got a church of 150 and he's got 120 views. Um, it's awkward. It's got a tripod. He has to walk up, hit record, walks back, talks, walks up and hit stop when he's done. I'm like, can't you find someone just to hit record and stop for you? Evidently not. And he's got his church just listening to him because his church knows his heart. The sheep know their shepherd. Just be you. Ladies, gentlemen at this time leading ministry, just be you congratulations, you can't be anybody else. Don't talk to the camera, talk to your people. Um, if you can't say your thought in a sentence, you don't have your thought yet, don't hit record. Um, 
care more about uh, why you want to say it than what you're saying. Your heart's going to come across to your people far more than how you're saying it. So don't try to be polished and don't try to stop and record, oh, let's redo that one. I don't like it. No, just laugh that you messed up, laugh that you stuttered, laugh that you didn't know the name of that big word because it was three syllables and just go on. Your people are going to find that endearing. And uh, again, YouTube and Vimeo can outproduce anything you're doing. Nothing on YouTube and video can compare with you right now. You're the only you. And if your church is coming on the weekends, they bought into you. Just keep being you in front of your church and it's going to work. And when the doors open, they're going to feel like they stayed connected this entire time. So, yeah. And what I'm hearing from you then is just like straight up authenticity, right? That's what we need right now. The, the, yep. the heart has got to come through. So don't have this overemphasis on the, on the polish and production value. One of the things that I, I shared in our zip line we send out, and it actually was a thought that I got from another one of our EFCA guys, Ronnie Martin, who just kind of encouraged people on Sunday morning, pastors on Sunday morning. He said, you know, pastor, it's okay to stutter. It's okay to stumble. And I was so touched by that. And I, what made me think of was like, you know what, record everything you're doing right now, because someday when, when your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, hear about the days when, when church was shut down and you didn't know what was going to happen to your church and everyone was afraid they were going to get sick and, and die and their relatives were going to die. And some of them did. You looked at the camera and you with conviction in your heart, you continue to proclaim the gospel as awkwardly as it may have been, but you didn't quit. And I just think there's a beauty to that. Like, I think there's like a, like there's this really kind of, we're in this beautiful time where, where who you really are can come out like it's never come out before. Yeah. And we got that one camera, one shot, just talk to the camera. And our first weekend of doing this completely online, the response just blew us away by people saying exactly what you're saying, Tim. Man, you were talking directly to me. You were in our house giving us hope. You were giving us encouragement. I felt like you were right there sitting with my family. I felt like my spouse and I, we've been married six months, an uncertain time to start a marriage with. I'm out of work. She's got a part-time job. We don't know where it's going to go. And we felt like you were just talking to the two of us. And that's, that's what I mean. Be authentic and just be you. I think the moment we decide to go online, we, we unconsciously set a new bar for, I got to be Joel Osteen. Um, I'm competing with Joel Osteen. You're not, and this is not, not anything against Joel Osteen. I hear he's the most incredible guy in person and one-on-one -on -one that you could possibly meet. But most people don't know. They film all four of his services and he manuscripts. And they take the best segment of all four services to make one online service. So even what you're watching of Joel Osteen isn't one message. They took the best parts, put them together. If you know that now, you can watch and tell. That's why he doesn't move the stage a whole lot. But you can tell when they cut to the audience and cut back and he's shifted, uh, they went to another service here. Um, because they're trying to get the absolute best. I mean, you know, their stuff is huge, but they're an online presence. We're not that, folks. We're us. And be real, be authentic, talk right to your people, share your heart, and your heart's going to come across stronger than your message. And, uh, and yeah, never talk to a camera. See your people, talk to your people, and be you. Yeah, and see, and see the audiences that are out there that you can't see, right? Like you said, the older couple that's really afraid or the, the single mom or the, the young married couple or, the, or you know, even the, the, our, our women that are pregnant right now. I've got some, some friends on Facebook and they're just like, wow, delivering a baby in a hospital right now, that's going to be really fun. Yes. You know? And there's some real legitimate fears out there. It's also interesting too what you mentioned because one of the things that's come out is how the celebrity culture is kind of deteriorating before our eyes because they can't they can't get in front of the studio camera. So they're doing, you know, shots in their homes. And we're kind of seeing behind the veneer of all this polish when they're trying to stay relevant and nothing, not trying to take shots against celebrities, but it's kind of like what you're saying, who you really are is kind of coming out now. And you don't have the, you don't have the luxury of all the writers and everything else or all the coaches giving you all this stuff to help make things better. This is just who you are is who you are. And, and, so this is your opportunity for the substance of who you are and what you believe and how you feel to really come through. And even what you're saying, how you feel, uh, yeah. why you're saying it is more important or as important as what you're saying. Yeah. And for me, I feel like our team has really tried to pastor our church at this time. We haven't tried to reach an audience that we haven't reached yet. And, and I, again, that's a different take than what people are doing. People are like, wow, more people are watching us than ever before. We can reach this whole community out there. And I'm like, maybe, maybe. And if you're reaching people in Wisconsin or in uh, Dubuque, or if you're reaching 
people in Sacramento, are they going to stay on with you when their church opens or when this shuts down? Are you going to keep doing this to keep them? Right now, we just want to shepherd North Coast. And if they find it valuable enough to send this to their friends, neighbors, and get other people, so be it. But we want when our doors to open again, um, whenever that day will come, we want our staff to be healthier and we want our congregation to be healthier. That's the two things we're trying to hold here in tension as we do this. We want a healthier staff, not a, a burnout one at time when all the people come back. That's really wise. Um, and we want our church to be healthier. And so if we're reaching other people because of this online stuff, great. But that's not, and I know we can get into then what's your mission and what's the gospel and what about the lost? I don't know. We want our church to be healthy because our church tends to reach the people that they know. And so we're really doing this for North Coast, not for the people we haven't reached. Because when these doors open, we're going to go back to church. I think we're going to learn a lot through this. But we're going to go back to our people reaching their friends that God has brought into their life. And so those are the people we want to talk to. I, I Again, I've watched so many times and I'm like, you're not even talking to your church. You're talking to, hey, for all of you that have found us, for all of you that are clicking on us today, for all of you now that, you know, we bring in our church to you. And I'm like, who are you talking to and why? Um, if that's a byproduct of this, great. But as shepherds, we want to take care of the sheep. We want to love the sheep. And we want fatter sheep when we get back. Um, yeah. That's what we want. Well, and there really is, like you said, there's that contrarian uh, aspect to what you're saying that's so different from what we normally hear. But the, I did want to ask you about that, too, because my sense is, and I mean, no one knows, but what are you thinking? Because you said a few times, hey, when we get back, when, we, when, when this, in a few months when this passes, is, is this, in your mind, a passing, you know, a kind of a parenthesis to how we've done the life and ministry that we just had to kind of endure? Or is, do you think this is going to fundamentally reshape things for the future for us? Because I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to go back and forth. I don't want to lack imagination. I don't want to be panicky or like too overly dramatic, but I don't want to lack imagination either. I mean, I, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think this is going to reshape our future. I think this is going to reshape how some of us do ministry a little differently in the future. So again, I, I don't think that this is a game changer. America, the church will never be the same. No, we're going to go back doing church. We're going to pick up and learn some stuff through here. I think some people who never had an online presence are going to keep an online presence, and that's going to be healthier. I think more people are going to realize you can talk to a camera, and you can reach more people than in one place, in one sitting, in one time. Um, the first weekend we did this, we had more hits on that weekend message than any weekend message, any Easter we've ever done before. Now we're still trying to get our Google Analytics and process some of our stuff and look at what was the retention rate? How long did people actually watch? How long did they stay on? Um, but we had 10,000 more views um, on our weekend message than any other weekend message we've ever done. Um, so that, that was significant. That didn't immediately make us go, well, let's sell all of our property. We got to do this from now on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, this is something we're going to go through. And I'll tell you next February how it affected us. Right now, it's going to tweak a little bit of how we use technology. Um, it's going to tweak with our teaching team, how much you look at a camera on regular weekend messages. Because, And on any given weekend at North Coast, 80% of our audience watches via a screen anyway um, or through satellite telecast. I mean, uh, only about 20% of our audience is ever in a room where we're speaking. So um, it's going to make us better at what we do. Um, I hope that it would make us better community partners with the agencies that we've worked with during this time and supported this time. So I don't think it changes our future. Uh, I think it should change some things of maybe how we continue to do ministry in the future through this. Yeah. Well, and so again, kind of a common theme of what our whole conversation here has been um, is kind of like, you're just telling us, Hey, run the fundamentals, man, the blocking, the tackling, just stick to the you know, don't give up the, the things that have made you what you are to do this mad rush to become something else. Stick to the fundamentals of, of loving people, shepherding people, being there for them is, is kind of a lot of what I, what I hear you saying. And so I think, I think that's a really refreshing take from what, again, a lot of, a lot of it's out there for yeah. us. Um, and we're, just, we're kicking off life groups right now again. You know, we go in, in semesters, and so we just finished our spring break, and now we're supposed to do life groups in the season, and we're going all online. You know, whether you have, if everyone's got an iPhone, they can FaceTime each other. Zoom seems to be the platform that most people are using, and you're doing life group like this. 
and it gets a little clunky. It's a little weird. Um, you know, we don't have as many squares as we have right now, but when everyone's unmuted, this becomes a little, what we, no, go ahead. Okay, go. No, you, okay, what, oh, I'm sorry. You, and you gotta get over doing that, that's weird. Um, so you almost have to take turns in the squares, um, but it's a way to connect right now and people are enjoying the connection. Our guess is what we're finding out, but we're, we're just week one into this, is groups that have been together and known each other longer can do this pretty easy. Like right now, I look at Bob Osborne, we can joke around, Craig Hill going on, Linda Bishop going on. There's people I know on this that I'm like, oh, I can talk to you all day in a square. There's other people like Jonas Bundy. He doesn't even appear live. He just has a picture, and I'm not quite sure. Jim Fisher, I think he's a cool guy, but he looks like he's in Italy, so now he's suspect. And so there's people that you don't know that well, and that's kind of weird because now I'm trying to build a relationship with the square. And so the newer groups are harder to get going. John Irwin, I could talk to the guy all day long. Don't jump from the bridge. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we're finding. For a season, we're going to find out how this works. One of you said, have you experienced people at North Coast feeling disconnected, isolated, depressed? We haven't had a lot of people telling us that. Um, but I know that's got to be out there. And this is a way we're trying to say, okay, here's how you connect with each other. Here's the other thing. I uh, don't get that. Hey, so all of your staff is just not working, but you're still paying salary. The people that we're paying, we really say split this. Give us a good 20 hours this week. Um, and if you're like, dude, but I'm about weekends. What do I do for 20 hours? We are having our campuses and our leaders call all of your key volunteers, call all of our key givers, not to talk about finances, but to talk about how you're doing. Call your worship teams, call your children's volunteers, call your setup teams. Right now, we've got phone banks just going on, and we are connecting with people like yeah, at no other time, saying, look, for our worship team, we're still paying um, 14 of our worship team, and yet, like I said, three weeks ago, they got together, and they knocked out four weekends in one day. What are they doing? Uh, they're honing their skills. They can do that online, but they have split down all of our volunteer worship people on all of our campuses, and they've each taken a list of 30 or 40, and they're just going through calling them. No one's mentioning finances or giving. Hey, how you doing during this time? We just want to check in with you. You've been such a valuable part of North Coast when our doors are open. Now that our doors are closed, we wanted to call you and say, how are things going? What are prayer requests that you have? We're getting a list of prayer requests right now just so our team can pray for the people we know and love. And just having those conversations, oh man, that is such a connect point right now for a team that really needs to do something for some of their hours. The rest of their hours, I want you to be at home. That's just a no-brainer right now. Yeah, right. So, so we have a few questions coming up here. Just uh, the first one is, what are you doing for children's ministry? And before you answer that, I did want to let you guys know, we just next Tuesday, just so everyone knows, I know we said we're going to meet on, on Wednesdays at 10 and that's kind of for everybody, but we're trying to break down into subgroups as well. So next Tuesday, we're going to have a children's ministry uh, um, webinar and a student ministry. And so the children's ministry is going to be led by Joseph Gutierrez from Southwest Community Church. He's going to kind of facilitate that. So please get that out to your children's ministry, volunteers, pastors, directors, whatever you have. So to come together and just be able to, you know, uh, Joseph will kick some things off. So, uh, but just to answer that though, why don't you take a minute and say, could you just give us a, a brief uh, overview on, on what you know about how you guys are handling children's ministry right now? Yeah, it is. Uh, this is where the genius of our youth pastors come out and just find ways to go. How can you connect? Whether it's uh, it's all through social media right now, Zoom platform still tends to be small groups are meeting. Um, but uh, for your Tuesday night or Wednesday night programs, whenever you met and your weekend programs are online, you can click on. It's our youth pastors in a coat and a tie behind a desk and a pair of Bermuda shorts doing something stupid in front of their kids with a Bible study. It's games that are going on. Last night, I got this from TJ McDaniel, one of our campus pastors. And he said, hey, in other news, our youth pastors are all caps amazing. Gordy grabbed an idea from TJ Brooks tonight. He had 42 kids guessing Pictionary prompts on Instagram Live and delivered the prize to the winner's driveways. I'm laughing out loud for real right now. Parents were playing from their Instagram accounts. Ha ha. Um, my dude Dante did a clip called Chopped Food Challenge. It went over super well. The students' parents had to taste and judge what their kids made in the blender and score the final product by submitting a video. So they're just doing all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, the synergy of our youth pastors learning from each other, 
just having times where all their kids are connected on social media. Um, our, uh, our, uh, our young adults pastor did uh, trivia on simply the TV show, The Office, and they just had an hour long trivia. You get together and it's all online keeping points who had the best office score and office trivia and they get prizes or Uber Eats cards, you know, to people that are winners right now. And so you've got a lot of stuff during the week. Um, Chris Hilkin, one of our teaching pastors, also over our young adults, he came up with um, the best tent challenge. Remember when you were kids and you had to be at home and you put all the furniture together and you put blankets over and you made a tent? He came up with who could make the best tent and you had to do an Instagram video of it. They've got over a hundred submissions. It is amazing when you get adults now in on a tent competition, the amount of big screen TVs and jacuzzis <laughs> you can do under a tent is pretty phenomenal. And so it, there's a lot of fun connection like that still happening where they go, this is my group. These are my guys. This is my people. Um, and then on the weeknights where they have group, they have their group that are talking to them. So you're going to click on and for 20 minutes, you're going to have your youth pastors. They'll come to church and they'll film something in front of their kids. And then their kids go to Zoom for all their small groups. And uh, I heard my boy last night because it's, it's junior high night. My youngest is a junior higher. And he was in the room with his little headset gear on that he does all of his gaming with. That's how they do now their Zoom small groups. And he's yelling emphatically at his small group guys, we're not going to watch the B movie. You don't understand. We're not watching the movie. We're all going to take parts and we're all going to read the script together. And I'm like, is that what they're doing? And his <laughs> small group decided to stay on for two hours. They downloaded that, that stupid B movie, that animated movie. They downloaded the script. They all took different parts. <laughs> And they did the entire script of the B movie, eighth grade boys. And I'm like, that's brilliant right now. Yeah, I, you know, I love that because we can't underestimate those kinds of things for our young people and our children because they, they are locked up at home and they are social creatures. They are social animals. And we have to be able to, uh, um, uh oh, does someone start screen sharing? I don't know what happened there. Uh, if you're screen sharing, do not screen share anymore. Um, I think Chuck, you're sharing the screen, but, uh, we'll get that fixed in just a second. There we Chuck, go. We're back. All right. Good enough. Somebody learn, right? Chuck. <laughs> Kick Chuck out of the square. Welcome. Welcome Chuck. We're so glad you're here. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, great. Now, now we know. So, um, yeah, no, this is know, good. It's just those little things, you know, our kids can find, they can find better creative video content anywhere online. What they can't find is their friends and their youth pastor being goofy with them. Just sitting there and being goofy with them. Uh, early on, uh, Trent Jenkins, our campus pastor, lead pastor at Fallbrook, said, guys, I want to tell you, my daughter's Girl Scout troop all got on Zoom last night. And his little girl sat on his lap just to see her friends. He said it was for 30 minutes, but all night long, she talked about seeing her Girl Scout troop. Mm -hmm. And for us, that was that light bulb moment going, Let's not create amazing online content. Bring your team to your people. Put your youth pastor in front of their students. Somehow get them connected with friends. Hollywood cannot compete against that. You know, no studio in the world can compete against that. That, that girl wanted to see her Girl Scout friends. She can't find that anywhere else online. And, and so when the church, when you can just be you, bring you to your people for Easter, how about you talking into a camera and saying, Happy Easter? Bet you didn't think we'd do it this way. Hey, guess what? We don't have a parking problem this Easter. We're not adding extra services. Here's what we're adding. A little more time just talking to you. And let me tell you what a risen life means in the midst of uncertainty. And just talk to your church. And I guarantee you, four years from now, they will talk about that Easter better than any live camel and flying angel production you've ever done. That's, that's so well said. Yes, I love it. So, and again, going back to it, and, and we'll make sure there's any more questions. We're going to wrap this up pretty soon. But again, what's so important, I don't want this to be missed. When it comes to student ministry and even your adult leaders as well, you're unleashing, the, the principle is unleashing them, right? Let, let, let them come up with the creative ideas and they're feeding them back to you because we're writing the script as we go. We not, this can't be a centralized thing. So really empowering letting your leaders go and come up with these creative things, 
and, and seeing what they're doing in the various, um, you know, micro levels of their relationships and context, right? And this is what happened that second morning, Wednesday night, NBA March Madness cancels. Thursday, we go into hyper mode. Whoa, 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 how do we change church? And it was, hey, for the next couple of weeks, America, we immediately went into what if for March, April, and May, we can't open our doors, which was back then we thought was ludicrous. But I remember saying, let's not do it for three weeks. Let's plan on three months. I mean, all we hear is rumors of China. I, 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 have, I have not in China. But if, if China happens here, what if we go three months? So in, on day one, um, we were first to go online that first weekend. And we there to realize we're going to go online for three months. Oh, I hope it's two or three weeks and the doors are open. Well, now three months may even be short. Who knows? And, and the second morning, that Friday morning, I woke up, my phone, like you guys, is blowing up. I'm online, I'm chirping like a bird, and my wife is staring at me, because my wife knows Chris will get up early, but he won't speak for at least 45 minutes. Um, don't, if, I'll stay up till three or four in the morning with you and be like this. Get me up and expect me to talk? No, no, I'm not a morning guy. And Amy just sat there looking at me, and she goes, it seems like you're excited about this. And she said that with concern and it gave me pause and I realized what she was saying. And I said, babe, I'm not exciting that this is what's happening in America and around the world right now. Here's what I'm excited about. I've got five meetings today with the best leaders in America at any church and they happen to work at ours. And I am just going to pull a pin on a grenade and roll on the table and say, how can you be creative and get in front of your people? And I'm going to watch them do what they do. Um, my job has just been running behind amazing leaders and cheering them on. Every idea I mentioned wasn't my idea. It's just applauding those that are doing it right now. And, uh, and that's what I got excited about. For you guys to sit with your church and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's stop being Joel Osteen. Let's stop being Stephen Furtick. Let's stop trying to become this online powerhouse. How can we just bring EV free blank to EV free people? No, I love it. How can we do it? And that's what got me excited to go, okay, now we lowered the bar. Once we've done that, how can you spend better time at home than you ever have been before? Because guys, we are in a storm. The front part of this storm created two weeks of craziness. We're in a lull right now of, I mean, we got a giant office and there's four people in here. We got 611 people on staff and there are four in this building now with me. That's it. For an extrovert, I'm dying. We're in a lull right now. Make the most of your personal, spiritual family time in this lull. Because whenever those doors are going to open again, we're going to be in a crazy season of, oh my gosh, we got to do this all over again. And it's going to be crazy. In this time, build into your forced sabbatical like you have never built into it before. And don't feel guilty about relationship time right now. That's where we're at. Yeah, I love it. Chris, you know what? This has been such an, a huge encouragement to me and is all the participants that we've had in here. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, I just want to ask you to, to, uh, to pray over us, man. You just, you have a gift God's given you of exhortation. You breathe life into stuff. And I just, I just love for you to pray over all of us right now, especially as we head into the next few weeks with our, for our families and our church, Easter, all that kind of stuff and, uh, pray over us. And, um, and we'll go ahead and end. But man, thank you so much for what you've, what you've brought to us today. I'll do that. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having us. Tim, I appreciate you putting this up. I appreciate your leadership for all of us right now. I mean, I'm one of the churches under your umbrella that just loves being a part of the uh, EFCA. I really do. Um, uh, I love this tribe. I love the women and men that are leading this tribe. I love what's happening here. It's an honor to be part of this and, and to pray. So God, thank you uh, at a time like this that we can be women and men that are in charge of loving your sheep. And yet we have to do that differently than we've ever done it before. And for some of us, that's concerning. And for some of us, and we've done ministry for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and now that's been unplugged and we got to find a new way to plug in. God, may you give us your wisdom, your strength, your grace to know two things. How do we love your sheep when they're not at the ranch anymore, when they don't come back on the weekends? 
How do we love them and love them well during this time? Give us your wisdom and your insight for our people. Not what a church in Minnesota is doing or not what a church in California is doing, not what a church in Florida is doing. But God, you called every woman and every man to pastor at this time that's here because you really wanted them. You didn't want someone else. So give them what they need for their people at this time and give them the insight to know how to bring their church into the living rooms of their church. That church has always been and will always be your people, not a building, not an address. So help us do this well. And then God, on the other hand, can you give us incredible wisdom to have the best marriages, the best family time, the best time with children and grandchildren than we ever had, the best time with our husbands and the best time with our wives that we've ever had right now, Father God. May our families years from now not remember financially what happened to our church, but they may they remember the time mom and dad stayed home and built forts and puzzles and game nights. May our kids remember when spring break lasted an entire spring and they got more of us than ever before. God, may we never, ever feel guilty for loving the people you put in our lives as our first priority. May we love our bride more than yours. God, give us strength to do both these, to do them well. So when these doors open, we and our staff are healthier and better, and our people are healthier and better for it. May you give us that grace and that wisdom, Father, your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys, Woo! this got me passionate. Yeah, I love it. Hey, this is the strength of the EFCA. This is the strength of our tribe, and, and I love it. And this is so unique, the time we're here together. I want to let you guys know this has been recorded. It'll be up on YouTube later on. Please share it. Please let, use it as a way to encourage other people. And don't forget, we have more of these coming as the, as the weeks go on. And reach out to, to us, uh, EFCA district staff, for anything that you may need. Uh, along the way. We're here for you. We love you. And we're excited about what God's going to do in the coming weeks. Uh, Chris, thanks so much, brother. Thank you so much, everybody else. And uh, we're going to be breaking right now, but you guys have a wonderful day. And then don't forget about Linda Bishop. <laughs> God bless. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. See you, everyone.